Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Web Dots. Today I am going to discuss how we can implement graph and also how we can represent the graph in terms of adjacency list and adjacency matrix. And this session is for beginners and my focus will be completely on the implementation by coding. So let's move ahead to see where we are in our C sharp data structure course. So as you can see, we have already covered the concept of graph application and representation. I mean, how adjacency list looks like that we have discussed in my previous session. And in this session, we will implement how to create graph and how to represent the graph in terms of adjacency list and adjacency matrix. And these all are the further points. So do subscribe if you are interested in this. And now I strongly suggest you to watch the video on basics of graph and how we can represent the graph in memory via adjacency list and adjacency matrix. As you can see on the screen, I have given the name of class is basic graph. Okay. But before jump into the code, few lines I would like to discuss with you. The best way is to explain is through an example only. To represent the basic graph, we take an array of linked list. Okay. And the index of array represent the parent node. So you can see like this. So we are creating a linked list array. Okay. And we have given this name and the implementation consists of various fields and methods and adding the child node in the linked list. And if the edge is bidirectional, we will reverse the role of parent and child node. As we move ahead in this graph implementation course, we will discuss all the important concept and advanced concept as well. The add edge method takes two nodes between which we have to add the edge. Okay. As you can see, here's the add edge method, which contains current vertex and the vertex that we want to add for that. Okay. At, it means there will be an edge between these two nodes. Okay. It will look like this. This is my linked list array and vertex. I'm giving the index because here, this is the index based array. Okay. And we are adding last, which is a method of linked list. Let me show you what graph I'm going to implement for today. So you can see we have eight nodes, zero, two, one, three, four, six, five, seven. And this is unweighted directed graph. Okay. So this is what I'm going to implement today. Let's switch to Visual Studio to see all these things in action. This is my Visual Studio and I'm considering you have basic knowledge of Visual Studio, how Visual Studio works and how we can write the program in C sharp in Visual Studio. Okay. This is a very basic empty .NET Core application with selected language C sharp. Okay. And what I have done, I have added one class only, which is basic graph rest. All the things are as it is. Okay. So this is my startup class and this is my basic graph. To save the time, I have already implemented the important concept and I will go through line by line so you can easily understand how we can create graph using C sharp because there is no direct data structure available in C sharp through which we can use graph. Okay. So very first thing is I am using a HTTP context variable to write onto the response. This is very first point. Okay. So you can do this by just creating the instance of HTTP context accessor dot HTTP context. Next, I have two private variables, total vertices means number of nodes available in the graph and the linked list array. Okay. It will contain all the information of all the nodes that we have in our graph. Okay. Now the third point is the constructor of this class in that we are passing the N N is uh, depicting the number of nodes are available in our graph. So you can see we are assigning this variable to total vertices and linked list array we are also initializing and we are saying we have total eight linked list. Okay. Now we are initializing with a finite number and then we are looping through up to zero to eight. Okay. I mean, uh, zero to total eight. I mean, it would be less than eight means seven. And then we are initializing each linked list by using its index. Okay. With the help of new operator. So now our number of vertices are set and eight linked list are set that will be holding all the information for its adjacent vertices. Now the third method is adding the edge. Okay. In that what we are passing 
the index in which we want to associate another vertex okay so current vertex and the vertex that we want to add this graph is completely index based okay so that's why in linked list we are passing the vertex that will be actually the parent as well and the index of this linked list array and in that we are adding last which is a linked list method okay and in that we are adding this vertex so that's how we are associating a one vertex with another vertex and then when we are saying we are associating it means there is an edge as well between those two vertex okay so till now i think it's very straightforward so let me show you how we are calling so in dotnet core we have config services and we have config method so this method gets called by runtime using this method to configure http request pipeline okay so we will raise a request through browser that will be our http request so in that we are using this default piece of code here and i have written some important piece of code to calling our graph class so what i am doing we are creating the instance of this basic graph okay this is our constructor let me press f12 so we will see here we are initializing the graph we are initializing the every linked list we are assigning the total number of vertices that we have okay and then after that we are adding the edges okay it means zero is associated with two one is associated with three and one is also associated with four it is the same graph that i have shown you during the during my presentation okay till this point we are just adding the edges i want to print the adjacency list okay so for that let me click here hit f12 what we are doing in adjacency list okay this is normal text that we are writing onto the response i mean it's graph representation the graph adjacency list representation and after that we are creating a string builder instance and in that we are checking what is the length of my linked list array okay and then after that in our string builder we are appending starting with a square bracket we are saying node value okay i is the index which is actually a node as well or you can say vertex as well with neighbors okay in neighbors what we have we are iterating each item which is available in our linked list that we have added during our add edge calling okay and how we are adding all the edges by passing these numbers simple okay so i am iterating all the child items which are available in each linked list and we are appending in string builder and at the end i am just writing to the response okay so let's see this thing in uh, action let me comment this piece of code and i will show you how print adjacency list is working okay let me run the solution here we go now we can see this is graph representation graph adjacency list representation some node 0 is associated with 2 and 1 is associated with 3 and 4 let me show you you can see in our graph 1 is associated with 4 and 3 and 0 is associated with 2 let's go back to the browser so this is the pure c sharp implementation to represent the graph in terms of adjacency list by writing a simple program okay let's go back to the code now the next point is we wo we also want to display the adjacency matrix as well okay we know matrix works on row and column basis okay let me show you this method as well this is a very very important one so for creating adjacency matrix so now we are creating two dimensional array okay and we have not specified what will be the number of elements there and it is completely nullable okay and what we are doing we are just simply passing the graph that we have initialized okay and so we are specifying the number of rows and number of columns will be equal to the total vertices for example for now we have total eight nodes which is zero to seven so zero to seven will be horizontal and zero to seven will be vertical okay so that's how it is working so as of now you can see every index is my node so i am saying parent vertex which is zero it will start from zero and it will go through till the less than total number of vertices and we will increase every time this is simple for loop and i have just given this name so it will be more meaningful for you so what actually we are doing so we are passing this parent vertex into the linked list array it means it will pick the first item from the linked list array now we have first linked list and in that linked list what we are doing we are checking again we are creating a new loop 
and that is also running till the number of vertices that we have and that we are considering a child node and here what we are doing we are checking if parent vertex is not equal to child node it means we are not checking the same node again it means okay and then after that we are checking if child node is available in parent linked list okay then we are saying now we have an arc and if it is not null then we are saying okay we found the path and we are setting its value because it's a two dimensional matrix parent vertex and child node equal to one and in else case we are not doing anything it means else case will be null it means where where there is a path then we are setting one or we can also specify the weight of the arc or weight of the edge as well here but we are just making it simple okay so in this way for each vertex we are checking every item in each linked list and if there is a match if that element exists in that then we are saying it is one okay so in this way my whole matrix will be ready and then i am passing this adjacency matrix to this print adjacency matrix and we are also passing the number of elements we have in this print adjacency matrix let me have f12 it is the last function of this now what we are doing we are just passing its two dimensional array we receive the adjacency matrix and we receive the total number of count i mean how many vertex we have this is simple writing response okay the graph adjacency matrix representation these are the nodes very first thing we are doing it is a index based nodes we have in this graph structure so we are simply loop through 0 to 7 total 8 nodes and we are just writing on the response from 1 to 8 okay after that what we are doing we are just simply writing on the response we will start from you know we are just passing this uh, string format method i initially it will be zero it means zero first vertex we are placing pipe symbol then start rectangle bracket and under that we are simply saying if i is equal to j it means row and column also pointing to the same node it means there is nothing it means for same node there is no path i of j is equal to null then we are printing dot else then we are saying write the value to the response okay this i and j print all those value where we have set the value of one okay so don't worry about the piece of code every piece of code is available in my github repository and also all this piece of code is available on my blog as well and you can find the link of those in the description of this video okay so let me save all the changes let me go back to my startup class and run the solution okay i hope it will display the expected result now it is loading now here we go let me uh, minimize the screen a little bit so now we can see graph representation this is the adjacency list representation where we are displaying the data or displaying the graph in this way and another way is the matrix way okay so in matrix we are saying nodes we have 0 to 7 these are the total nodes and they are vertical 0 to 7 and where where there is an intersect it means 0 to 0 it means this is the same city we are uh, pointing out and there is no path okay it means you are at the same point but if you want to go from 0 to 2 it means yes one says it means yes there is a path between 0 to 2 2 we can go to 5 from 3 we can also go to 5 and let me show you through graph as well i hope the whole point is clear now for you let me go back to the presentation so this is the same graph you can see from 1 we can also go 3 from 1 we can also go 4 okay so this was a very simple implementation of graph that i have just shown you so you can see all the edges are directional in the graph adjacency list and adjacency matrix can represent the graph in the computer memory okay and this was the total output that's how we are representing adjacency list and adjacency matrix i hope you like this video if you have any comment any suggestion you can drop into the comment box and don't forget to provide your feedback that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos and i will see you in the next video where i will show you how we can search in this graph using a simple coding example okay till then bye bye